in the previous video we talked about the header processor now let us do one thing let us stop over there and let us discuss a new log today called matrix.log which is also related to the splunkd.log only because the source type you will see for this matrix.log in internal index the source type is splunkd only because the matrix.log also holds lot of useful informations so we will basically cover this splunkd.log and the matrix.log together maybe because when we will go to that deployment server and other uh, other log labels how to see the logs of different deployment server whether it's polling or not the deployment clients are polling or not properly so matrix.log will be needed over there so that's why we will get an idea about what is matrix.log and how it is logging then then maybe we will parallelly move on to the other other parts of that splunkd.log and then we will talk about the deployment server log so i am just setting up the ground for the deployment server related logs over here okay so what is matrix.log and what it basically logs so if you see the matrix.logs are basically logging the splunk performance level details like the system data the cpu usage of the internal processors if you remember we talked about processor in very detail right so we have in in splunk everything is a pipeline and and each and every pipeline is basically a combination of different processors and the queues right so the cpu usage by those processors the system data the queue usage everything is getting logged into this matrix.log now one thing we need to understand over here is it is a periodic snapshot if you see it over here so it has taken every 30 second of interval now how it logs basically so it's it's a sampling over 30 second that means suppose you if we have multiple processors over there the top processors which is basically consuming more system resources so those processors will be logged over here only so that's why it is a, it, it's a, it's a sampling and by default for each and every type of processor and each and every type of matrices over here we'll see that one it's by default it takes the top 10 hot sources okay so it will not give you all the for all your inputs what are the different processors are engaged their cpu usage no it will not give you that information it will only fetch the top 10 and based on that its usages different performance stuff it will it will log over there and how it will determine the top 10 so it, det it determines based on the size of the raw event over here but this one also is configurable in the limits.conf i think there is a stanza called matrices over there you can basically configure this one so let us let us see that one so if i go to splunk then etc system default folder and open the limits.conf over here if i just search matrix and if you see the maximum series it is currently it is by default it is 10 so you can change this one as well so that it will take the top 20 or 30 something like this one okay let us go back to our ppt and the default configuration only maintains the matrix data in the internal index for few days because each and every log in splunk has their own size limit we have seen it in the first video i think and i think that 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 size is 25 mb once it is reached that particular size it it basically rolls to a new file and then it will continue logging to this this particular same file again and again now how how to query the matrix.log it is very simple index equals to underscore internal and source equals to this star matrix.log star and as i said the source type is important over here so let us see that now if we go to in index equals to underscore internal and if i just see the source so this is the source for matrix.log so that's why we are writing source equals to star then matrix.log star okay and if i just see the source type over here it's this splunk d only okay so in fact like if you see if you see the lot of if you see the splunk d source type 
so there are a lot of log files which are basically indexed into underscore internal index with splunk resource type like matrix.log health.log splunkd.log we uh, we were discussing splunkd.log in detail right even even this is this is this is how it it, it basically rolls to this new file if you see matrix.log.1 license usage dot log as well okay now let us go back now let us talk about a typical structure of this matrix.log if i if i just show you one one of this log so this is one of the matrix.log i have just copied from my internal index so this 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 is the typical structure we can see and almost for all the matrix.logs events you will see this kind of structures only okay so the first one is the timestamp one and the second one is the severity of that particular event so generally for matrix.log this one is always info as i as i have seen it mostly and this one is the type of event and i think it is almost always it will be matrix only now this one is important is the group so this is nothing but the reported matrices now there could be multiple groups over here like the pipeline we talked about different pipelines in splunk right so then then we talked about different queues as well then throughput through tcp out in out connections so this this these are all like the processor related stuff if you see the groups right and 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 as we have discussed before like the splunk processors are getting basically involved when the data is coming into the system and going out of the system right so like the input and the output as well so th all these things are basically handled by small small processor over here and those processor level usage like the system usage is actually logged into this matrix.log so the group is actually telling us what kind of processor it is or basically i will say what kind of matrix we are reporting over here okay whether it's a pipeline related matrix whether it's a queue related matrix like that and the name is basically the processing phase like the typing or or we can say like indexing and, and and those stuff and here if you see we have the name of the actual processor we have talked about different processor like you like utf8 processor or we have input processor hex processor so those processors name will be listed out over here but it will be only then when we when our group is actually the pipeline because processors are always involved in the pipeline process right and apart from that if you if you see it over here we have lot of other infos as well like cpu seconds executes cumulative hits so these are so these are very much uh, limited to the what kind of group it is so if you see the different groups let's say queue group maybe these informations will be different okay as i have given an example of the pipeline group so that's why this cpu seconds executes cumulative hits are coming up for other groups it will be other stuff but more or less the log structure will be something like this one now what we'll do is we will talk about different different groups in detail and we'll see what kind of informations or or kind of insights we can we can gather it from there so first we'll talk about the pipeline group so as we as we have seen it before so this is this is a typical event for the group equals to pipeline and and if you remember when we talked about the converting a log from from a log to a matrix we actually worked with similar kinds of event in our matrix playlist right so so this is the pipeline event over here maybe i'll i'll give you that video link over here as well but anyway uh, this is a typical log of the pipeline group equals to pipeline that means whenever the pipeline process are getting triggered so this kinds of log will be generated over there okay now as i have said before so there are couple of interesting extra fields we need to talk about when we talk about the pipeline group is the cpu seconds and the execute this the, i think according to the splunk documentation if you if you just analyze these two fields this this is perfectly enough now what does cpu second means it's just a how much cpu time it has taken for this particular pipeline for this particular typing data processing phase and what kind of processor it has send out currently i have taken the log log for the send out processor and the executes is the number of time the data reach to a specific 
processor over here okay so if i just talk about the send out processor that means there are 403 times the data has reached to this particular processor over here now the question is what kind of insight we can get from this from this particular log now if you if you think about it when we talk about pipeline we have several processor over here right so we can we can get an insight if i just draw a time chart of cpu usage for each and every processor for a for let's say hourly or or every 10 minutes or every 5 minutes we'll we'll see like a pattern like how our cpu our cpu is getting cpu usage are happening in your splunk environment if we get a sudden spike maybe we will we will see like for that particular processor it may be a high cpu usage is happening so we can concentrate on our, on that particular processor over there and and related logs over there okay and we saw and and uh, we still not finished it for all the processor but we saw how to see the log from the splunk d for a specific processor over here so if you see it the matrices dot log is actually telling me where my problem is as it is logging for the data for the top 10 processors so it will we will always deal with those processors where the system utilization is very very high over here okay Let, let's take a look with an example so if i run a query something like this one okay so 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 we already have source equals to so let's let's do that over here so we have source equals to matrix dot log star matrix dot log right so i am currently doing it for last 24 hours now from here i will be choosing the group called pipeline as we are talking about the pipeline group and now if you see like all these fields like the processor and the name everything is getting automatically extracted because it is equals to separated right so splunk is automatically extracting those fields over here and one interesting thing over here if you see if i just click on the processor over here so these are all the different different processors some of it we already know it like the header processor the aggregator reader in standard out indexer so all these different even we talked about the line breaker as well right so all these processors related stuff so these are all like top 10 processors over here right now if i just draw a time chart so i'll just i'll just copy that code so it's nothing time chart span equals to one hour and we are just taking the average of cpu seconds over here by the processor so we will get an idea about what's going on in our in our system okay where my cpu usage is very very high so you will see like over here the the cpu usage the in if you see the processor is the indexer over here so it was taking more more cpu when it was when it was called over here right and when you talk about this processor these are all comes under other so this is not in the top 10 that's why it was coming under others over here but currently these are the, all the my top 10 processors over here which is taking taking more more time over here and among them the indexer is basically utilizing more cpus over here okay so i am i am dealing with my standalone splunk installation when we talk about the splunk search aids or it's a when you talk about the busy production scenario so generally you will see a continuous graphs over here let's go back so we talked about how to how to get insight from the cpu seconds over here now let us see how we can use this executes to get some insight over here so for that i just taken a similar example from the splunk documentation itself so if you see like if you get this kind of event something like for the processor aggregator read reader input regular ex expression replacement and standard output you are getting executes values of something like this one and if you see it after the aggregator the execute value is 698 that means almost 300 to 400 times the data is not reaching to the reader input that means what may be happening over here is you will have many multiple line events over here so that's why when the aggregator is combining them to form a single event so the reader input is actually getting less number of event compared to the aggregator so as executes tells us the number of time the data reached to a specific processor so the aggregator 
maybe the 998 events were going into the aggregator but it's coming out it is the 698 events because the aggregator already already aggregated them to form a multi line events over here so this kind of insight also you can get it from here using the executes over here now let's talk about the queue group as we have seen it before and i told you before the log structure will be similar we have the still have the time stamp we have the severity the type of the event which is always matrix the group as well but in this case the group will be q over here correct and q means as we have seen it before for each and every processor when they talk to each other they talk with a persistent q right they sends their output to a q and the next processor will take the output from the queue itself so in splunk we have lot of queues like one of the queues is win parsing maybe we'll when we'll see the internal log we will come to know about other some other queue names over here as well but for queue if you see it like this datas are different from the pipeline values right we have the queue related information like the maximum size current size current size in kb the current size the largest size the smallest size over here the most two important stuff will be the maximum size in kb so that could be that will be the maximum queue size and what will be the current size of the queue over here so if we are reaching this maximum size over here so we cannot put another item in the queue that means there could be something called bottleneck for that particular queue over there right so those kind of information we can or those kind of insight we can get it from this two information so i think even splunk also recommends other values may not give you much insights over there apart from this maximum size kb and the current size kb for the queue so let us see an example over here as well. so if you do the similar stuff with group equals to queue and what i have done it over here is i have time charted for the current size of the queue So I'll copy it. I'll paste it over here for the last twenty-four hours. Okay. So, so currently, like, if you you will see most of the times the current size is in 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 zero. But whenever the queue is getting filled up, the next processor is not able to take the data from the queue because of its. of it some it, it, either it may failing or something happened with that particular processor the queue size will be increasing right so in those cases the current size will be increasing as well over there so those kinds of information you can derive from here from this this kind of query over here or this kind of logs over here and if i just go back to the ppt sometimes you will see this logs as well like blocked equals to true as well included over here okay so That 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 means that particular queue. So let's say for win parsing, I am getting blocked equals to true. That means the this particular queue is not able to take any other. So we cannot put basically another item to this queue. So in a in a busy production scenario, sometimes very scattered way you may get this blocked equals to true over there. But if you are getting continuously blocked equals to blocked equals to true, that means something wrong happened with that particular queue. So then you may need to analyze that particular situation over there. And if I just go to our internal logs, and if I just go over here, group equals to queue. I just wanted to show you the different queue names over here. So if I just see the name over here, so these are all the different queues Splunk handles over there, like HTTP input queue, indexer queue, null queue. This is an important queue in Splunk where suppose you, if you want, do not want to index some event. I don't know whether you have encountered this scenario or not. In Splunk, programmatically, like through props, you can you can do something like this one. Like if I have, if I get an event which is having this particular regular expression which is basically matching a particular regular expression either i will index that event or i will not index that event so when you do not want to index that event you will basically send it to the null queue okay so this kind of queue related stuff also you will get from the matrix.log and again as i said it always give you the data about the top 10 so we will stop over here in the next video we'll talk about some more stuff about the matrix.log before we resume to splunk.log okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in next video